The countryside is fantastic at this time of year. The verdant fresh green of new growth. Flowers like cowslips. Ransoms or wild garlic. You can use these leaves in salads. Just make sure you wash them first. Garlic mustard or jack by the hedge. Trees coming into leaf and flowering, like this horse chestnut. Will you be playing conkers in the autumn? Birds are now all busy breeding. Building nests like this wren under a small footbridge. Found by my nephew when he was looking for the troll. These house martins are collecting mud to build their nests. Here they are adding the mud to the nests. Some birds nest on the ground like this skylark. Have you heard it singing? It's very difficult to see high in the sky. This is the male. He is singing to the female on the nest to let her know she's safe. If you do see it, watch as it stops singing then drops like a stone to the ground before running to its nest. Many birds nest on the ground so you must be careful when out walking and also keep your dog on a lead. Even being careful, we startled a pheasant off this nest. If you do find a nest by accident, leave it alone and the bird will probably return. No harm being done. Enjoy your walks in the country and keep your eyes open. <laughs> the primary school children which visit Stockbridge Technology Centre plant various crops such as these lettuce. These lettuce plants were grown in glasshouses to protect the young seedlings. Now they are big and strong plants, they can be planted outside. The pupils are planting them with spaces between each plant to allow them space to grow. Once they are planted, then they are covered with special material. This keeps the soil and lettuce warm by trapping in heat. But let's rain through so the plants don't dry out. Oh my 
Growers plant lettuces in a similar way, but on a much larger scale. First, the ground is prepared. Then this specially designed planting machine is used. It allows these people to plant the lettuces as the tractor slowly drives along. How many do you think they can plant in a day? Once planted, the lettuces are covered with the same special material as the pupils used. This farmer is planting Brussels sprouts. The sprouts arrive in trays. Each tray contains 365 plants like these. The plants are about 8 weeks old by this stage. Sprout plants are put into pots by hand by these workers sat on the planting machine. The machine then plants them in the ground. One plant every 45 centimetres. The machine does five rows, 60 centimetres apart, at a time, so there are five people working on this machine. Each day they plant about six football pitches of sprouts. Each football pitch area will contain about 28,000 plants. How many plants is that in a day? How many plants will each person have to put into pots? Do you remember seeing the piglets being born and then weaned? They have really grown since we last saw them. As they have grown, they have moved into larger pens. They are now almost ready for making into bacon and other pork products. But they must be the exact weight according to who buys the pigs from the farmer. If they get too heavy, the price will drop, so the farmer weighs them to decide when to send them for slaughter. These ones are ready, so they get a red mark. They will be loaded onto a lorry and then made into bacon and other pork products. My name's Tim Laverick and I'm from A. Laverick & Son Butchers at Hull on Spaldingmoor. I'm now the fifth generation of Laverick Butchers and we've been butchering on this site for over 150 years. What we have here, the first thing is a lamb that we've been to market and we've bought the lamb live and we've had it killed at a local slaughterhouse. This is a whole lamb, two legs, and there's the loin, there's the two shoulders and there's the neck. I'll show you what we're going to cut up is a pig. The principle is exactly the same as the lamb. Same format, two legs, two loins and the shoulder. But just obviously again because a pig is a bigger animal than the lamb, this pig weighs 154 pounds. Uh, from the pig, again we've got the legs which were for the roasting, the loin here, your pork chops, your belly pork here and your shoulder here 
which we bone out for pork pies, sausages and sausage rolls. Pig in two halves, of which we're going to show you how we cut it up. Here we have the side of pork that we're going to cut into mainly three primal joints. So we're going to take the shoulder off, which we count five ribs. One, two, three, four, five. Full shoulder of pork, of which you can have a nice slow roast shoulder off that. Right, what we're left with now is a hind quarter of pork. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to use, this is going to be used for pork today, so we're going to have some pork chops and we're going to have some leg of pork. If we wanted to make this into bacon, this would become your ham, which we would take the leg off, take the bone out, and then we need to cure it with a salt solution, either a liquid salt or a dry cured solution, and then that would create ham. Bacon is a manufacturing process, so a pig just does not become just bacon, it has to go through a manufacturing process. For your sliced bacon, for your bacon sandwiches, it would come off the line here, of which I'll show you where we're going to take the line off. Now we have a loin and a belly. If we were going to turn this into bacon, into short back bacon, we would take the rind off again because we don't want that. Take it off the bone and you would end up with just your eye piece there and a little bit of the tail on the end. What we're going to do with this today, this one we're just going to show, we're just going to cut some pork chops. That's the line for the pork chops. And that's where your pork chops come from. Just to cap, this is what we've left with our half pig, if you can remember seeing it hung in the fridge. We started with the front end, which is the shoulder, so we bone the shoulder out, and these are on top of the shoulder a few of the bits that we've created as we've cut the rest of the pig up. And that there is going to go to make sausages, pork pies and sausage rolls. Our spare ribs which we took out of our belly there. And that there now can go to be for belly pork joints. Or uh, if we wanted to cure it we'd make it into some streaky bacon. We've ended up with our loin here which we've made some pork chops. Or same again, we can bone that out and to make our dry cured bacon. And then we've ended up with the leg, which we've taken the bone out, which created a few more of the, the, the bits to make pork pies and sausages, and we've ended up with a boned and rolled leg of pork. So that there is your half pig, of which we have now butchered.